Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 92 of Bardic Quest. After a gruelling battle, our heroes are left to deal with the aftermath. Saga's wounds are severe, and the party find themselves at a crucial crossroad. What destiny-altering decision will Saga make? So without further ado, let's get into this week's episode of Bardic Quest. We're picking up now in the aftermath of a somewhat unexpected fight with a pack of wolves and their leader, uh, who seemed to be a wolf-man hybrid of some kind. Could I get, please, first of all, a nature check from all of you? Because that seemed to be good. 17. 17. Uh, 18. 18. 16. 16. Oh, okay. <laughs> good rolls for everyone. You are all Ooh. collectively pretty certain from all descriptions that you have heard in legend and the like that the creature that you were dealing with was indeed a werewolf. The combat ended with Saga being bitten by said creature. And if legends were to be true, it would be probably fairly safe to assume that Saga may well now be infected with the lycanthropic curse. She is looking a little worse for wear, to say the least. A really deep wound kind of on her shoulder near her neck. Um, a bite mark, uh, which is already looking to uh, be, um, well, it looks almost infected in the way. And, and that's happened quite quickly um, as the almost the veins and blood vessels around the bite mark are turning like a a dark purple colour um, around the bite mark. Is there anything anybody would like to do in the immediacy? Saga's clutching her neck and yeah, just clutching her neck like this, mm -hmm. panting. Uh, Thoric um, kind of is really frustrated that uh, this thing got away and is just kind of heavy breathing from sort of exerting himself but then turns his attention to Saga and he runs over to her and uh, says are you okay? Can I, can I take a look at that? She moves her hand he and very carefully I'll sort of like inspect the wound um, uh, seeing as we know that this was a, a werewolf mm -hmm. and like is it safe to assume that we know kind of all the old wives tales and all the kind of pop, pop culture references of lycanthropy things that may or may not help yeah you've all seen like help. werewolf in New York and teen wolf and oh, all yeah. of those things yeah oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I've seen the I've seen the traveling play Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But yes, I mean, uh, you are very unlikely to have ever encountered one <clears throat> yourselves. But certainly, all of the folklore, the myths, and the legends um, are ones that w you would be aware of. Um, 
Okay. Uh, recollections and accounts and things vary um, as to the degree to which the various aspects of lycanthropy um, really kick in. But mm -hmm. you will have at least a general sense of what it could mean uh, for her to be infected with said curse. Can I... Um... Would you allow a uh, medicine check or a herbalism check with my herbalism kit to see if there's anything Thoric can do either with the resources he has or whether he could possibly find some kind of uh, herb or something that would, I don't know, help her now, ease the pain, stem the how quickly this is going to spread, any of the above? Mm, yeah, give me a... Uh, well, I mean, we're, we're kind of talking um, about a curse in many ways, which is uh, where mm. you'd be looking at in terms of uh, your your knowledge. You'd be thinking of it certainly as a curse rather than necessarily yeah. a disease. Um, mm. But in terms of perhaps uh, the pain and things, there's, you could certainly give me a medicine check um, and see if there's anything that you can do to alleviate that. And if you wanted to give me a religion check too... Uh, as it relates to the curse, then you please do. Woo! We're not the most religious boy. He at least pays attention to that. So medicine, that is a 16. And okay. a religion, that's a nat 20. Ooh, nice. Okay. Um, so... My plus zero. <laughs> <laughs> so, in terms of uh, the medicine check, um, you certainly... Uh, are of the belief that you have a varying number of uh, herbs and things in your medicine kit, your healer's kit, um, to alleviate things. But you're also very aware that it is unlikely to, to really have any long-term effects. Just it is simply to remove some of the discomfort, some herbs and things um, which might alleviate the pain. In terms of uh, the religion check, a curse of this strength if folklore is to be believed would require probably a remove cursed spell or indeed a really powerful spell which you have heard of in your uh, studies perhaps at the temple and such uh, which would be a wish spell um Thoric uh, looks frustrated um, and uh, just says to her, we're going to figure this out. Okay. I, I guess that's your way of saying you don't know what to do. I do know what to do. I can't do anything. Which is what is frustrating. Um, I can help with the pain and I can maybe help, you know, ease your comfort a little bit, but this is beyond my skill to heal. Um, and uh, he'll kind of like look down and then sort of clap uh, Saga on the shoulder and start boiling some water and uh, sort of adding some herbs and stuff to make a, a simple poultice to kind of clean, as much as he can, clean the wound and make sure there's nothing more, uh, you know, no normal infection that gets into the wound, etc. Don't suppose anyone has a drink? skins i'm a fair bit over there i'm i'm kind of i was just having a bit of a tantrum yeah so that's, that's what your hand's doing at the moment is um it's just kind of just on his knees just kind of just kind of struggling with the idea of <laughs> even though there's a much more severe uh situation happening with nina your hand's kind of wrapped up in his own thing just kind of like Takes his head off for the first time and is just like, <sighs> D 
just kind of gets up and kind of sulkily half runs back to camp because he just realised that what happened to Anina, sorry, <clears throat> what happened to Saga. And um, runs up to her and kind of doesn't really know what to do. So he, he wants to like, so he just looks at Thoric, hopefully, and asks, is there anything, anything you can? Thoric gives him a kind of weak sort of grimace and says, uh, I, um, I've, it's stories, mate, um, you know, this sort of stuff. It's, it's more legend than lore, if you get me. Um, I think there are things that can be done and I've read about them and heard about them and, but I've, I've not done these things. It's beyond my, it's beyond my power currently. Do we know how long? Do we know how long it would be till uh, Saga starts getting, you know, needing a... Can this information be gleaned from a roll? <laughs> um, again, I think because of your, uh, your... Actually, let's not link it to the nature check, actually, because we're actually now talking about the effects of the curse rather than the creature itself. So could I get uh, some arcana checks from you? No, uh, as we're talking about curse... Yeah. Let's go with, let's go with, uh, hmm, actually, no. Do you know what? Let's not roll anything, because you rolled a natural 20, Isaac, uh, on your religion check. So I think it's probably fair to say that you would, again, it's difficult because the stories will vary. Um, so this is going to be somewhat of a non-answer, despite the high roll. Um, but legend suggests that transformations are linked to a full moon which it currently is but the legends never really seem to specify whether or not a whole lunar cycle needs to uh, pass before the curse really kicks in so at best Saga's probably got until the next full moon, which would be about 30 days. However, that is assuming that the legends are accurate. Which, again, stories vary. And uh, Saga would certainly be aware that the this wolf had been following her around for some time within the last 30 days, which would imply that there's certainly some degree of control even outside of the lunar cycle. Again, it's a non-answer, but I think contextually yeah, yeah, yeah. is helpful. <clears throat> Any of that's from Thoric, he relays to everyone. Um, and he comes over to Saga and he's he's sort of digging in his mind about is it safe to say that within that sort of um high roll on the curse he's is Thoric aware of a werewolf's uh uh what's the word? Um aversion to silver. Yes, certainly. Cool. Um, Thor is going to take... But also, I would also say um, that the... It's only... I think with a role like that, I think you, you'd certainly know that it's only non-magical attacks that aren't silvered that a lycanthrope is immune to. Okay. The magical attacks would, and I think that you probably experienced that in the combat if memory serves anyway, magical attacks would affect the creature normally. Yeah. But yes, that aversion to silver you'd definitely be aware of. In which case, um, 
Thoric is going to take uh, Thoric's going to do something a bit sort of odd um, uh, he's going to take uh, his axe he's going to take one of his thick silver rings off because he's <laughs> covered in rings um, he's going to use his axe and his hammer to crack it mm -hmm. flatten it um, and he's actually going to start to like use the side of his axe and sort of two hands to like essentially like shave shavings off of the silver ring and to basically destroy it and to get as many sort of flakes of silver as he can okay um, into like a little pile he's going to take a clean bandage soak it in this uh herby sort of hot water um uh wring it out slightly so it's still like kind of almost scalding to the touch um and he's going to sprinkle some of this silver onto the inside of the bandage and then he's going to lay it over the wound he doesn't know if it's going to have any effect but his in his mind he's thinking this might slow it this might help he doesn't mm. know he's trying he's trying everything he can and uh when thoric places this bandage on uh your wound saga um there's certainly a stinging sensation to it it's uh very warm uh almost hot um to your skin but you're not entirely sure if that is because of any part of the curse or just simply because of the preparations that um thoric made with the silver um or indeed actually the fact that it's a a fresh wound um so you would expect some um discomfort anyway at this point um but it certainly stings as he places it upon you okay she winces but apart from that doesn't do anything and, uh... she's kind of not looking at either of them she's she's got a thousand yard stare Uh, um, looks at Thoric worried. How are you two? How are you two doing? Um, health wise. <laughs> uh, I'm full health for my temporary health, which is five less than my maximum. So, yeah, I don't think I took any damage. One it's... second. <clears throat> <clears throat> Bearing in mind also, um, I believe Saga's watch was the first watch for the uh yeah. for the overnight watch. Oh. So actually, uh you would soon you are still in the middle of the night, but you would soon uh provided that the rest of the night passes uneventfully, of course, uh you would soon be on the receiving end of some long rest healing if you wanted to. We'll see. But that's <laughs> we'll, we'll just see. FYI, not necessarily me telling you whether or not you should <laughs> heal up or not i don't trust you um <laughs> <laughs> sorry it's nothing personal i just don't then i am doing my job saga, wonderfully. Saga, did... <laughs> yeah. saga took some damage but how much uh one moment while i check is she below half don't oh. think she is but again okay let me see pause okay. while we wait it's all right. I normally have it have it up on my D and D Beyond where I can see you all, but uh, I didn't on this it occasion. It might be better if you have it up, just in case. Uh, so uh, the health rates currently sit at. Oh, actually, you're you're not too bad, so You're on twenty three out of thirty seven. Probably not will happen. Uh, I won't use the only thing available to me then, which would have been my channel divinity, because it won't affect any of us. Um. Yep. Thoric will make Saga as comfortable as possible and then say try and get some rest, okay? So Saga, you're only about halfway through your watch um, when you were interrupted. Uh, so would Saga like to finish her watch? Yes, she would. There's I'll no take her watch. Sleeping. You what? two should sleep. You... What's the worst that can happen now? You need to rest. I'll take your watch. 
So it meant to go through the list. After my watch. Yeah, and just kind of stands there, just kind of. Just, just please, we don't need anyone else injured. You should dress. I'm disinclined. I'm disinclined. After a few walking. hours. Yeah. Thoric reluctantly yeah. listens to her. He's like, no, this isn't, this argument isn't going to go more than one way. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> Thoric reluctantly. Johan will kind of. Like, gets in his sleeping bag and kind of angles himself towards Saga and just kind of like... <laughs> well, like, tries to keep his eye on her. I hope you're enjoying this week's episode of Bardic Quest. I just wanted to take a quick moment to highlight our Adventurer's Guild to you. Now, I understand more than you might realise just how difficult it can be to arrange a game of Dungeons & Dragons, particularly if you don't have friends who are into D&D, or indeed if you don't have a friendly local game store that is, well, local. So, I am offering my services as a Dungeon Master to members of the public. To find out more details, head on over to bardicquest.com forward slash play, where you can see all of the pay-to-play games that I'm currently running, powered in part by our friends over at startplaying.games, and ran over Discord, so you can enjoy these games of D&D in the comfort of your own home. Again, bardicquest.com forward slash play lists all of the adventures that we're currently going through, including The Lost Minds of Fandelba, which we're currently running through as part of the show. Um, but we're also running a few other games at the moment, including the Tyranny of Dragons campaign. But there'll be other games on there as well, no doubt changing as time goes on through the time travel magic that is the internet. Uh, so head on over to bardicquest.com forward slash play to see what games are available, book yourself in, and we'll see you round the table. Okay, so Saga, you are now on watch. Mm -hmm. Thoric and Johan, clearly concerned about your current condition. What would you like to do? She'll wait. She'll wait. Um, how many hours would there be left of the watch, do you think? An hour or two, maximum. Okay. Well, she'll wait probably an hour. She'll make sure they're both asleep. What are you thinking? She wants to make sure they're both sleeping. Okay. Do you want to give me a perception check, please? 18. 18. Okay. Mm -hmm. You look around, and uh, you have to wait a while, because uh, Johan is really trying to fight against his sleep with his clear concern for you. Um, but eventually, after a intense battle against... Um, a certain individual, who we will get to in a moment, um, the exhaustion kicks in, and eventually he falls asleep. Uh, now, suffice it to say, Saga, that as mm -hmm. you are sat with your thoughts, you are considering strongly the identity of this werewolf. But I think she's, I think she's pretty damn sure. Mm -hmm. uh, just in case it's not clear to our viewing audience, uh, what is Saga's hunch at this point? That uh, that was uh, Elise, formerly her late husband, Trial, based on what he said. Mm. Which I believe was along the lines of "You are mine now." Um, uh, so yes, so you are now thinking on trial and, uh, 
a few things are coming to mind for you because uh, you had obviously at one point believed him to be dead and then it was revealed to you by uh, Ridral that rumours were that he was alive and well but nobody really seemed to know where he was um, and that he had been following you for some time mm. keeping an eye on you from afar in a wolf form um, is there anything that you would like to do? He's going to spend a long time Mm -hmm. does the bite does the sensation on her neck change at all or is it the same it's very much a, a throbbing sensation um, it's mm. almost you can almost feel the veins and the blood vessels pulsating um, as it deals with whatever it is that you have been infected with um but aside from that, the sensation remains mostly the same. Mm -hmm. She's going to add some more wood into the fire. Mm -hmm. To make sure that stays on for longer. Sure. Then she's going to quietly. Yeah. Um... She's going to go through her pack and see if she can find any paper. Let me see. Uh, no paper. Or I know even... Johan has some, so she's going she's to go through his stuff. Excuse right. me. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to give me a... Uh... Stealth check, first of all. Uh, this With better. advantage, because he's asleep. Okay, good. It's not nice when someone else does it, is it, Ollie? <laughs> the rogue being roged. <laughs> <laughs> you just got rogued. 17. Oh, nice. Um, I think it suffice to say uh, that it's probably going to beat uh, Johan's passive perception, particularly when he's asleep. It is indeed. Um, so I don't you... like my own medicine <laughs> <laughs> you rummage through uh, Johan's backpack whilst he's sleeping trying to be as quiet as you can um, he likes to keep his uh, quill, ink and paper close to hand so you don't really have to rummage too deep into his uh, backpack before mm -hmm. you find some and uh, definitely remove it from, from the bag He's gonna write thing. Rip that page, throw it in the fire. Then she'll write a second one. She gets a bit further along. Does the same thing. She rips it and puts it in the fire. And then slowly pausing a lot in between sentences. She's going to write a note she's happy with it then she puts the quill back in his bag she's gonna roll up the little piece of paper and tie it together with some twine she has twine in her pack um <laughs> Then she thinks for a moment, and she took a manticore feather from a fight long ago. She's going to shove that into the into the twine, mm -hmm. and then she's going to slip that inside his notebook, so a little bit is poking out. Okay. And she's going to put his notebook back on the top section of his bag. Mm -hmm. And again, 
very, very quietly. She's going to gather her stuff. She might leave some stuff, but she's going to take the most important stuff. Make sure the fire's on. And then she's going to walk up the hill where we saw him running into after she was bitten. So that's it for another exciting episode of Bardic Quest. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Before we go, I just wanted to take a quick moment to say thank you to a couple of folks. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to James Webster for providing us with and allowing us to use this beautiful animated artwork that features throughout the show. If you are a fan of his work and want to show your support to him, then head on over to patreon.com forward slash jamesrpgart where you can become a patron of his. But also I'd like to say a big thank you to our friends over at Sirenscape for allowing us to use their wonderful ambience, music and sound effects. So if you'd like to introduce those sounds to your table, head on over to sirenscape.com to check out their amazing work. So that's it from us this week and we will catch you next time.